Hello all, I welcome you all to the second part of the ninth lecture. So the last time we met, we spoke about uh, high field uh, uh, electronic transport, what happens, velocity saturation and so forth. So now we will, uh, we will talk about the important governing equations. So these equations will help us better understand the PN, the treatment of PN junction that we will uh, that will follow this. Okay. So the the most important the equation, one of the most important equations in any of the electromagnetic treatment, is the Maxwell's equation. So we will start with our uh, basic introduction to the Maxwell's equation. Many of you would have seen this in one form or the other previously. So I will just rush through this and uh, I will encourage you to question me in case you don't understand any of these things. So the most basic of the Maxwell's equation is the fact that the uh, the magnetic field is uh, is is incompressible in the sense it is del dot b is equal to zero that is it does not diverge there are different ways to say it this is one of the most basic uh, aspects of the electromagnetic or magnetic field the second one being del dot d d being the uh, dielectric displacement is equal to rho x comma y comma z rho being the the density of charge right del cross e e being the electric field is written as minus dou by dou t of uh, b b being the magnetic field strength right and del cross h is dou d by dou t plus j right so we saw this is the most simplest form that is the magnetic field does not diverge what we mean by that is that what do we mean by divergence so basically it is dou b x by dou x plus dou b y by dou y plus dou b z by dou z right so what it means is that either all of these components are zero in the sense of the magnetic field so just straight lines everywhere which we know is not true right very close to the poles they are actually not the same they are actually converging or diverging what they mean is that if it extends so let us say that we have a magnetic field which goes like this right everywhere if it extends to some extent to the to the x direction it will reduce to the same extent in the y direction right so basically what happens is what was initially absolutely horizontal right if you take one step towards the horizontal line it will turn to be so less horizontal and then a little bit more vertical right so that its actual vector will slightly shift so you can see that at every point here the vectors move such that each one of them will oppose each other or they will just all turn out to be zero right so this is what is the property this comes basically from the fact that you can uh, uh, you can you can add let us say take this equation and add a dot product to this del cross h right and we know that del dot j equal to zero right because you know this dielectric displacement does not vary with time and let's say let's say if there is no time dependent component right the current does not diverge right because we know that the dot of a cross product is always zero right so if i if i replace one by the other we can see that the current does not diverge right? and there are there are some what is called as auxiliary equations which mean that d the dielectric displacement is an epsilon times the electric field epsilon is the uh, is the dielectric constant right at static or low frequency it can be written like this or at very high frequencies you can represent it as epsilon s yes, t minus t dash sorry e r comma t dash dt which at very low frequencies will uh, will fall down to this equation and you know the uh, the traditional magnetic field equation which is written as h r comma t is b r comma t by mu naught minus m r comma t 
right m is the magnetization and b is the magnetic field strength so basically this h is the effective magnetic field inside the material and d is the actual extent of polarization by the applied electric field e of all these equations one of the most important equation that we will use throughout our course is the poisson's equation which is written here right it says the divergence of the electric field or the divergence of dielectric displacement is proportional to the density of carriers that we have here i am sure you have seen this many places and you will also seen it work in uh, in your basic electromagnetic course so these are the things that we will use for uh, our development of uh, Uh, charge transport in a semiconductor right in addition to this maxwell's equation we already saw about the current the current does not diverge is what we get from the maxwell's equation we can also write the current as two components right the current coming from the uh, electrons is is a component of current from drift plus current from diffusion which we know from the previous equations is e uh e n mu n e plus e d n d n by d x if it is in one dimension or if we write as uh, let me write it in uh, the proper vectorial form del n right and j p is uh, e p mu p e minus e d p del p right and again this is the drift component and this comes from the diffusion component right and the total current is always a summation of electron plus whole current right so with this we can also well, once again you can substitute d p to be k t by q mu and replace them one by the other right because we previously saw about the relationship between uh, mu and d so these are the uh, relationship with the current and now we will go to what is called as the continuity equation which is also a very important uh, set of equation which is true for most of not only the electronics but also in flow dynamics right all they are trying to say it all stems from the fact that the current is divergent free or current is incompressible right the only place in which the current becomes compressible is the is a condition in which you have changes in the carrier density so what they mean is if i have the a conductor right where the effective density of carriers do not change have a constant number of carriers everywhere then the current which goes in should leave out right whatever that comes in should go out otherwise there is a stagnation in the uh, there, there will be some stagnation in the material here leading to uh, having uh, a violation of the incompressibility right if equal to zero means that there cannot be any changes if suppose there exists that this is not true if del dot j is not true right then that means that there exists some amount of uh, carrier which is being stagnated inside and that will be q times 2n by 2t another way to write this is actually what is so this is what is written in the usual classical case in which you talk about uh, flows in uh, fluids and stuff but the typical way in which the electrical engineer writes this equation is do n by do t is that you take this particular uh, you take this material and take some cross section this cross section of say del x right and then you calculate what is the change in the uh, in the density of carriers in this volume del x volume that is written by do n by do t that is a function of time right it will increase if we have generation if for some means so if if by some means i am going to inject carriers from the top or shine light and generate carriers that you can have some sort of generation you can have some recombination we saw various means in which carriers can recombine right they recombine band to band by emitting light or it can have a recombination with the help of a trap 
so either way you can have a generation and recombination which acts as opposite to each other and there is and think about this if you are talking about this particular volume okay let's say this is x and this is x plus del x there is some current which comes from this side and there is some current which leaves from the other side right so what is the density of carriers which is stuck here is the influx influx is j x right this is current so i have to divide it by the charge q right and also we are talking about carrier density per unit volume so it is del x what leaves this volume is j x plus del x by q del x right so this we can write as g minus r plus 1 by q del x j of x minus j of x plus del x if del x is small enough you can write it is g minus r plus 1 by q d j of x by dx which in three dimension we can again write as g minus r plus 1 by q del dot j right this is the this is the this is the famous continuity equation which just means that any change in the carrier density in any portion of the material should either be accounted by uh, a generation or a recombination or a spatial variation in the current typically if the carrier density does not change the spatial variation of the current should be zero current is generally incompressible if you undergo if it has some sort of a change from either by uh, an injection either by generation you will have this equation to be true the same equation can be written for the whole as well which is written as g here i write it as write as n okay right gp minus rp minus 1 by q del dot gp right so now let us uh, substitute the values that we know from the previous derivations and then uh, expand this particular equation right so do n by do t we know to be equal to the generation rate minus we know the recombination rate of electrons right the electron in the n type region the recombination of electrons in n type region is actually insignificant because we always thought that the doping density is much large much larger than the recombination rate and stuff right so it it becomes more important if you're talking about electron in the p type material right so we write this recombination rate as n in p type material minus n in p type not right by tau n so this is the re electron recombination in a p type material where electron is treated as an uh, is a minority carrier right plus 1 by q del dot j n and we know what is j n j n is our previous equation right with the with the combination of drift and diffusion so it is g n minus n p minus n p naught by tau n plus 1 by 1 by q del dot j n you can write uh, j n as so q uh, mu n do e by do x right plus 1 by q mu n so basically sorry i forgot an n here mu n into q into e do n by do x remember right because both of them can be variable plus 1 by q into q dn do square n by do x square which can be written as gn minus np minus np not by tau n plus np mu n do e by do x plus mu n e do n by do x plus dn do square n by do x square it's just uh, like a thing right so basically this is dn by dt 
the same thing can be written for holes as well gp minus pn minus pn not with oven minus pn mean do e by do x minus mu p e do p by do x plus dp do square pn right so from the previous expression we know that these things are current components the change in the current and this is a generation this is the recombination right? so with these equations one week we can try to understand the carrier dynamics in uh, in semiconductors so we will see a few examples right now and then we will go and treat the uh, pn junction in uh, in full depth right so the first uh, expression our first example is what is called as a Stevenson case method for minority uh, carrier lifetime generation so first example this is a Stevenson's case minority carrier lifetime experiment so what he did was he took a semiconductor and then shine this with some uh, some photons above the band gap right so if it is an n type material we know that this will create electron hole pairs and p let us say our uh, n carrier density will be n plus del n which is approximately equal to nd and we have p plus del p as a whole right and we know this into n plus del n n i square and then we know the expression how it goes right the the experiment was if i take this right and connect to this a battery right with a very small field or let us let, let, let us for the first uh, order do not connect anything right let us just take this assume this to be floating and then see or understand how the minority carriers will change over time right so this is a n type material so let us take the uh, the expression we are talking about the minority carrier so mostly we are worried only about the p type right so we know that do p by do t is some generation gp minus the recombination of uh, uh, holes in the in the n type region tau tau n tau p right so we have this and because it is not applied because there is no field applied to this the rest turns out to be zero right because there is no there is no gradient in the in the density as well because this particular semiconductor is uniformly illuminated from the top so there is no gradient so there is no diffusion so this is the only thing that we have let us assume that we have been illuminating this for a long time and a steady state has been reached a steady state dou p by dou t tends to be zero right so therefore p n is p n naught plus tau p g p so what it means is the number of holes at any time is the number of holes that was originally there before the illumination started plus tau p is the recombination time and gp is the generation right it is the combination of tau p gp will tell us how much more carriers that we have with respect to the uh, original hole carrier density right now let's assume at time t equal to zero the illumination stopped right so the question is how does the uh, the, the minority carrier density change over time we again go back to the same equation dou p by dou t is gp is now zero right because the light, the light is now switched off minus we have just the pn minus pn naught by tau p right? and we know the solution for an, a, a differential equation like this the solution is just p is equal to some a e power minus pn by tau p right sorry minus t by tau p plus b right this is p 
now we have to we have to identify these constants which we know that at time t equal to 0 pn is pn naught plus tau pgp and we can also assume at time t equal to infinity pn will become equal to pn right at infinitely far off time we can always expect the carrier density to fall to its equilibrium value given these two conditions the solution is pretty straightforward you will get your pn to be pn naught plus tau p g e power minus t by t right so this is a, a very simple example which says that if i if i plot the density as a function of time it will be p n naught time till t equal to 0 at t equal to 0 it starts following exponentially down right so now let us consider a, another uh, interesting uh, example which was treated by shockley so it's called as uh, uh, hinge shockley experiment so in this experiment you shockley took a bar of semiconductor and then at some position let's say x is equal to 0 he was able to shine light in a very narrow fashion right? in the sense that he was able to generate carriers in this very narrow region right? so the question was then how does the carrier density change right? so now you have both you have generation as well as diffusion right because you can see that the carrier density is inhomogeneous in position right so Let's see how do we calculate this. If I write the uh, so once again we are going to assume an n-type semiconductor, right? So once again we will write the carrier density continuity equation for the minority carriers because the majority carriers do not really change. For the minority carriers, you have a generation minus you know you have a recombination as we had in the previous time, but now you also have what is called as a diffusion, right? So this tells us that at time, let us say, uh, at e even at a steady state situation, whatever that you are shining, you will have some sort of a diffusion that falls down. Right? So if let us say that if we assume initially for our simplicity, if we assume that the recombination time is much longer than the diffusion time, let us say that it is so fast that the, light, the carrier densities will diffuse we can assume this to be 0 right so we can assume um, tau p if is infinity we can we can take this one to be 0 for the first uh, case and we are, we are we are looking at a situation where you shine and then you are looking at how the carrier density change over time right so g will also turn to be 0 dou p by dou t will be dp del square p and the solution for this is a pretty straightforward Gaussian, right? So the solution for this is P n of x comma t is some constant which was determined right? two root of pi d p t e power minus x square by four d p t. So this was a kind of a Gaussian solution which was assumed by Shockley. This you can see is also intuitively ap appeals to you because you can see that the system is symmetric over x and y so it has to be an even function in x right and because it is it is also a kind of a, uh, you can see that it is a kind of a wave equation right so you have a spatial double derivative on the on the right as well as the uh, a, a single time derivative on the left this resembles the kind of equation that you see as a Schrodinger's equation, right? But nevertheless, so the solution of this is an is a, is a kind of a Gaussian. If you if you substitute p in this, you will see that it satisfies this equation. But given that this is a solution, what it means is that if I have this, and then uh, let us say the the con the concentration. So, okay, let us uh, let us do like this. The God for the Gaussian the mean is assumed to be 0 here and the width is proportional to the time 
right this is the uh, the two sigma of the gaussian which is seen to be proportional to the time so what the solution means is that at time t equal to zero you have a very narrow gaussian and as, as time proceeds you have something which broadens over time right and the intensity should also drop because you have the intensity also here whose the amplitude of the gaussian also decreases with time right so now if you introduce to this uh, this equation the uh, recombination factor as well so you have do p by do t is minus p minus p n naught by tau plus dp del square p the solution was found to be p naught by 2 root pi dp t e power sine of x square by 4 dp t which we already saw right plus t by t p right so all they are saying is that the the amplitude actually decreases as the there is an exponential decay because because of, of the intensity because of the recombination that we currently consider right comes of e power minus t by t tau right it's just a multiplication of e power minus t by t tau so as time proceeds you also have an exponential decay in the in the amplitude in addition to the gaussian broadening that happens because of uh, time progression but then in addition to this he also added an uh, an electric field right which can be written in the uh, if 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 to this that you have applied an electric field e Right. you can then the, subtract the uh, continuity equation as do p by do t is g p which which will turn out to be zero right because uh, you are talking about what happens after the illumination minus p n minus p n naught by tau p minus del dot p mu n e plus d p del square p the solution for this was identified to be the same p of x comma t is p naught 2 root pi dp t e power x minus mu p e t square by 4 dp t plus t by t t tau p so what it means is that after the time i mean the the center of the gaussian so basically this is the gaussian mean right the center of the gaussian is shifted by mu p e t when you apply an electric field this also makes a lot of sense right so if i have this uh, this bar and then at time t equal to zero i'm generating this gaussian carrier excess carrier density if i apply an electric field as time progresses the gaussian intensity decreases broadens and also moves away right at time t equal to 0 at time t equal to 1 at time t equal to 2 so this solution means so basically you have a shift in the mean position of the gaussian of the gaussian as time progresses you have a gaussian which becomes wider and you have a gaussian whose amplitude changes exponentially or decays exponentially right so this is the famous haynes shapley experiment which can be solved theoretically using the continuity equation that we saw before and we will continue using these equations to understand carrier transport in the semiconductors in the following classes right so we'll stop now thank you